We are on board the Aegean Odyssey. Its specialty is cruising the coastal waters of the Mediterranean. Classified as a mid-sized ship, it is able to visit ports that are too small for larger vessels, and in particular, able to navigate around the scenic islands of the Adriatic and Mediterranean. The Greek island of Corfu lies in the northern tip of the Ionian Sea and at the entrance to the Adriatic, a true crossroads between east and west. It has an area of about 600 square kilometres. It is about 60 kilometres long and about 30 kilometres at its widest point. It is the second largest of the Ionian islands. For more than 400 years the island was under the control of the Venetians so it strongly resembles an Italian city. Although never occupied by the Ottomans, the character of Kikira town was influenced under the rules of the Greeks, the Romans, the British and the French. The city of Kikira, the capital of the island of Corfu, is one of the most interesting towns in all of Greece. We enter the area known as Old Town through the Spionada, or City Park and on a hot day the shady trees and cool grass are a welcome respite. The fountain in this part of the park is not operating today, but this may have more to do with the Greek economy than a shortage of water. Cars are not allowed in the narrow streets of the old town. It is strictly for pedestrians. So the place to park for all the residents and workers is around the famous Corfu Cricket Ground. Like many of the cities along the Adriatic coast, UNESCO protects Corfu's compact, strollable old quarter. The narrow stone paved streets, the tall buildings, frequent archways, often hidden by the clothes that have been hung out to dry, and mansions with elaborate balconies, create a medieval atmosphere. Built in 1663 during the Venetian occupation, the Town Hall Square was the meeting place for local nobles. In 1720, this beautiful building housed the famous San Giacomo Theatre, the first theatre in Greece. Today it is Corfu's Town Hall. The monument of Nicholas Manzeros, director of the theatre's orchestra and composer of the Greek national anthem, adorns the square. Corfu's architecture was strongly influenced by Sicilians, Venetians, the French and the British all of whom occupied the island at some time in its history. Over the centuries, much of old Corfu has been changed, rebuilt or removed by occupying forces, including the German bombardment in 1943. But enough has survived to make the old town a pleasing, homogenous ensemble of beautiful architecture, narrow lanes and quiet little squares. Many of the streets and lanes are lined with shops and they sell everything a tourist or local resident would need. Apart from the usual tablecloths and men's and women's clothing, the island has between three and four million olive trees and because of this, 
Olive oil and wooden souvenirs are cheap and make great gifts to take home. The population of the island is about 110,000, but only about 30,000 live in Kikira town. The island is invaded by hundreds of thousands of visitors every year because of its history and the fabulous climate. There are about 37 Greek Orthodox churches on Corfu, but the Church of St. Spirivon is considered the most famous. Its bell tower is the highest in the Ionian Islands. Dating from around the 1580s, it is modelled after a Greek Orthodox church in Venice. The basilica has a single nave that consists of a hall-like room divided by three magnificent arches. In front, is a beautiful marble iconostasis that resembles the entrance of a baroque style church. The door on the right is the crypt where relics of Saint Spirivon are kept in a double sarcophagus. The beautiful ceiling rows contain segments depicting scenes from Saint Spirivon's life and his miracles. Outside, Spirivon Square contains the statue of Georgius Theotokos. Born on Corfu, Georgius Theotokos was a national hero and four times Prime Minister of Greece. Centred in the beautiful Veracliotti Square in Old Town is a stepper, a cylindrical barrel or laundry tub dating from the 17th century. It is used partly by locals in an Easter ritual. At the end of the Spionada West Esplanade is the Gate of St Michael. This and the Gate of St George are attached to the Palace of St Michael and St George. Built in 1819 by Maltese stonemasons for the British Lord High Commissioner Sir Thomas Maitland, today the palace houses the Museum of Asian Art. In the palace gardens is a statue of the third British governor to the island, Frederick Adams, dressed in the robes of a Roman Emperor. Along the esplanade, under the shade of the impressive holm oak trees and large umbrellas, is the perfect place for weary travellers to rest. The restaurants here have been operating since British rule, and right next to the esplanade is the famous Corfu Cricket Ground, also a contribution from British rule. It was the French who landscaped the Spionada, thus creating one of the most beautiful town squares in all of Greece. It was the British who taught them how to play cricket. Cricket matches usually happen on a Saturday. And today, it is a popular area for parking the town's cars. The food in the Esplanade restaurants is beautifully Greek. Our starter was Greek yogurt, crusty locally baked bread and iced tea. And after, souvlaki, salad and chips. A Greek staple and just delicious.
Oh dear, what an easy catch. The clear blue waters of the Ionian Sea, and in particular the old fort sticking out into it, has been a draw card for invaders, pirates and tourists for centuries. The Byzantines originally established the old fort during the 6th century, and in the 11th century it was strengthened by the occupying Venetians. From 1537 till 1716, the fort resisted all invasions, mainly by the Ottomans. The present day entrance to the fort is guarded by the statue of Count Johann von der Schulenberg, a German mercenary soldier recruited by the Venetians in 1716 to defend against the Ottoman siege of Corfu. Today a metal bridge has replaced the original drawbridge over the Contrafossa. The Contrafossa it's really just a canal built by the Venetians as added security from land invasions. Modern day buildings overlook the original Venetian bastion and moat. The Venetians created an impenetrable triple line of defence, both by land and from the sea. The original British built military hospital now lies in ruins. The Ionian University Music Department and Public Library are now housed in the more modern buildings down below. An important icon saved from the British destruction of the fort in 1864 is the Venetian winged lion, the symbol of St Mark. Our guide Rhea takes a moment to give her opinion of today's Greek economy. So the situation in Greece is very, very bad. Especially now, it was already a bad season this year. Now with the high, uh, with the higher elections as well, it's going to be the September even worse. So this is going to affect also not only the mainland of Greece but also the touristic islands. And we say that the islands are the ones that they support also a little bit the economy of the whole country because this is also the only industry that Greece has, the industry of tourism. And uh, we know that it has been a bad uh, season. So now it's going to be worse, and uh, we usually say here, especially in Corfu, uh, if it's a bad season, then it's going to be also a very bad winter. Eh? Everything works as a chain. <laughs> One of the most significant things the British garrison did in 1840 was to build the Anglican Church of St George, complete with Doric columns. From afar it looks like an ancient Greek building, however the church was built to serve the religious needs of the British troops stationed here. Its design belongs to the so-called Georgian style of neoclassical architecture already prevalent in England during that period. Although it includes strong reference to the British St. George, today it is a Greek Orthodox Church with a magnificent stone icon stasis dedicated to St. Spirivon. The icons were painted in the 17th century and a local well-known Corfu family donated the wall in 1864. The church is one of the few things left behind by the British when handling over the island in 1864 and on the esplanade outside can be seen some of the relics they did leave behind. Two 8-inch land mortars circa 1780 and a six-pound British light field gun of about 1871. Corfu's old fortress is one of the most impressive fortifications in Europe and on a clear day the fittest venturers can get a 360 degree view from the lighthouse on the top of the rock. A 600 metre path leads through the tunnels cut in the rock to the lighthouse and the abandoned military hospital. The views to the north are of the Gulf of Kekira. And to the south, the crystal clear waters of the Bay of Garitza. The wonderful Mediterranean climate with mild winters and refreshing summers brings tourists to Corfu. In fact, 
the island's economy depends on it. Industries such as manufacturing, farming, dairy and fishing are all but non-existent. Olive oil production being the one exception. Like the rest of Greece, Corfu's economy has suffered because of the Greek debt. Too many people relying on the public purse for salaries and pensions, and too many people avoiding paying tax. The Greek government is trying to rectify the situation, but with problems caused by refugees from Syria and North Africa. When the summer tourist numbers are down, the people of Corfu suffer a bad winter.